Today on Handy Dad TV, I'm showing how to add an outlet to an existing circuit from another room, through a wall, and around a corner. I go into detail about measurements and layout before making any cuts in the drywall. I'm adding this outlet behind the toilet to install a bidet seat, which I'll talk more about near the end. So this is the toilet in my master bathroom where I want to install the bidet. And it's in this little commode closet here behind a door. And as you can see, the hard part is there's no outlet anywhere near it. The closest electric that I have is this switch here, which I could potentially use. We're going to talk about that in a second. But the other side over here is where the shower valve is. So I know there's, there's definitely pipes in that wall there. The closest outlet in the bathroom is over here next to the vanity. Now, I could run an extension cord from there down and underneath the door, and, but that's kind of, I don't know, that's not really what we want. <laughs> we really want to put an outlet behind the toilet. So how are we going to go about doing that? Well, first step, I, I did say that I could take power from here and it would involve very carefully opening up the sheetrock to get an outlet a little bit closer. I mean, I could put an outlet directly down here and the cord might actually be long enough, but again, I'd prefer not to do that. I'd prefer it to be a nice clean installation and put the outlet somewhere at the back of the, uh, the toilet. Now backing out from the bathroom, you can see over here is our walk-in closet. And there is no outlet inside there either. Now let's look on the other side of the wall. All right, so the walk-in closet is right behind this corner right here. And then there's the commode right there. And there's the bathroom over here. Now I do have two outlets. One's right there. So that's approximately where the vanity is in the bathroom. And then there's another outlet back here behind this chair. Now that outlet is the closest to the toilet, which I expect the toilet is somewhere right around here. So that, that's actually a good candidate for me. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. Now I'm gonna measure from the wall over there to here to see exactly where I think the toilet is and where that wall is behind the toilet. These two lines represent that back wall behind the toilet. And so you can clearly see that the outlet is on the other side of it. It'd be perfect if the outlet was here. I could just basically run a wire right through. But I can't. Now, one of the things I could do is I could cut a hole in the sheetrock here and that would enable me to get a wire over to there and put an outlet on the other side of that wall. But that would entail me cutting a hole in here and then I'd have to repair the sheetrock and paint it. Two problems with that. Number one, I don't actually have this paint color, so that would open up a whole nother can of worms. But number two, it's gonna be a drywall fix, like a repair, right in this center of hallway as you walk into my house. That's what you'd see first. And so I really don't wanna do that if I can avoid it. I do have another solution though. Now I can take advantage of the fact that that outlet on the other side is somewhere around here and my toilet is over there. So I can remove some sheetrock here and this I can repair. This color I have and nobody's gonna see a uh, repair in here in the closet. So this is definitely the better approach and that's what I'm gonna do. Now, I didn't describe this on camera. I just came in here and started filming. So what I did with all this this blue tape is the first thing I did was I marked the studs. And you could see those are marked uh, here. And I put an S on those. And then I also figured out or at least assumed where the valve would be by the toilet. And the water line I know comes from that wet wall by the shower. So I wanted to avoid that. So what I basically did was I, I said, all right, this is where I assume the outlet is on the right hand side in the dining room. And the one on the left is the one where I assume I, I want to put my outlet on the other side. So this is the spot that I actually want to cut out. And I'm going to actually save the pieces to put them back in when I'm done. 
and just tape it up and paint it and everything. Now there's two tools that I could use. One is this, uh, this is a keyhole saw or drywall saw. And uh, because I know I've got a double stud here and here, this is kind of hard. I wouldn't be able to, to get it. This is good when you've got empty space where you need to cut into. But it also makes some dust. And it also leaves a jagged edge. So I'm going to use a utility knife instead. And that's going to give me a cleaner cut, less dust, and the pieces should be really, really good for me to reuse. Now I have half inch sheetrock here and it's going to take a while to get through, but I did put a nice sharp blade on and that does help. The other nice thing about a utility knife is it doesn't go that far into the wall, whereas this you're going to go far into the wall. And I know I've got wires and I've also got pipes down here, so this is a better option. That's one, and that's two. All right, and here you can see my double studs, just as I predicted. And here's the wire coming down into that outlet. So it's a good thing I didn't use that keyhole saw. Now I have the right breaker is turned off here, and you can tell there's no lights, obviously. This is my tester. When this lights up with two greens, that means the outlet is wired correctly. I'll be using that at the end to show that I wired everything correctly. But the the breaker is off, so this circuit is dead. That's what I want. Now, what I also found out by looking at the breaker, two things. Number one, it's a GFI breaker. So that means this is a GFI protected outlet, and so will the outlet that's gonna be put in behind the toilet. So I don't need to use another GFI behind the toilet. Secondly, I found out that this is a 20 amp circuit. Now, what does that mean? Well, basically it, it determines what size wire that I need to use. So I actually need to use 12 gauge wire here. That's the 12 two you see right there. 12 gauge wire is for 20 amp circuits. If I had a 15 amp circuit, because that's the other kind that you'll see in your house, then I would use 14 two wire because it's a little thinner. So this is for 20 amp, it's a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna open this outlet up now and let's see what we're dealing with. Okay, here you can see there's a wire coming in the bottom of the box and out the top of the box. And that's the one that I could see that's attached to the stud. The stud is right here. Now, what I'm gonna do is poke a hole and stick my wire through from up top. I'll come down from the top because that's where my uh, hole is on the other side. Now you can see the grounds are all pigtailed here. They're put together under a wire nut and one wire goes to the outlet. You can't put multiple wires on the green screw. But you can see the white wires are attached to both screws here. And the same thing for the black on the other side. Now that's typical because you can avoid using an extra wire nut. It's a little bit faster for electricians to do it this way. But because I'm adding a third wire, I'm going to have to pigtail all these together. There you can see, I poke the wire through from the top and I'm just gonna pull it down. Okay, that's plenty. All right, there's two ways to do this. One is to take a, well, I would have had to cut out a lot more sheetrock, but one way is to drill through the studs as close to the middle as possible. And I would have had to do that in both directions and try to turn the corner inside this little cavity right here. The other alternative, which is a little bit easier, actually it's a lot easier if you had a sharp chisel, but um, it's to notch out the stud below the sheetrock. And then I can actually turn the corner on the surface. So I've got four studs here to, to notch out. That's what's taken so long. Now, the, the only thing is when you're gonna do that, that leaves the, the wire exposed very close to the surface. Somebody could put a nail through. What we wanna do then is get a nail plate to put across and it'll just protect those wires and that way nobody will uh, hit them or get shocked or anything like that. So what I did is I took this, this is called an old work box and it has these wings on it that lift up when you tighten that screw. 
and that'll hold it in the sheetrock so you don't need to attach it to a stud. And I traced around it and I cut the hole to fit it perfectly. And so uh, now I can fish my wire through. Oh, I had one casualty. Nail pop right here. Dang. Well, that's what happens when you bang the heck out of studs. It's a lot easier to strip the wires before I put them in the box. like this little thing? I have referred so many sales of these things on Amazon. It is a really one-click wire stripper, so if you have trouble stripping wires, this is the way to go. There's a link in the description. If you're using a power drill with an old work box, be sure not to over tighten. Installing the receptacle is really easy. You just connect the white wire to the silver screw. And the green screw is for the bare ground wire. And I don't use the push in connectors generally. I like to screw down the wires. These are thick enough wires that I definitely have to use the screws, but uh, don't use the, the stab connectors on the back. That's just a bad practice. And then I flip it over and the black wire goes on the brass screw on the other side. And it doesn't matter if you use the top screw or the bottom screw on the side of the receptacle. And I remove those four little tabs on the receptacle because uh, it fits more flush with an old work box. There we go. New outlet is in. Now I'm working on connecting the other end of that wire to the existing outlet. And if you remember, there were two cables already coming into that outlet, which meant there were two black wires, one on each screw. So now I'm pigtailing it. So a pigtail is a, like a six inch length of wire and I'm connecting that to the rest of the wires. And remember, I added one. So this is actually four wires being connected under a, a very large wire nut. And I like to tape them just to make sure the wire nuts stay secure, because you'll see in a moment there's a lot of wires in this box. And I probably wouldn't go with more than three cables in a box this size. That would be kind of challenging. So I do the same process with the ground wire and the white wire. And then I, just like before, connect the white wire to the silver screw and the black wire to the brass screw. And I didn't have to reconnect the ground wire because that's already been connected. And I also like to tighten them down with a, a real screwdriver, not, not just the mechanical one, because I always find that the mechanical just doesn't get them tight enough. Now another thing that is optional, but a good practice, especially when you've got a lot of wires in, in a box like this, is to put a wrap of tape around the receptacle. And that just prevents if the ground wire happens to come in contact with the black one. That would cause a short and your breaker would pop off. Now the tough part is getting them back in. All right, the old outlet is wired. Okay, the breaker is back on. And we got two greens. And in here, we got two greens as well, so we're wired correctly. Now, unfortunately, those plates have a thickness to them, so it does stick out, but that's okay. I'll just, you know, feather out the mud. It'll be fine.
that's going to need, need a little tweaking to get that in there. I'm not going into detail on how to do drywall repairs. I have other videos on how to do that. But you can see this is what it looked like when it was in progress. And uh, truthfully, I still haven't painted it yet. So don't tell my wife. Now that the outlet is installed, let's talk about the bidet itself. There are many different kinds of bidets on the market these days. And I have two of them here from BioBidet. They sent me these. This is not a sponsored video. However, they did send me these for demonstration purposes. So they basically send me both ends of their spectrum, the lowest end and the highest end. So we'll start with the lowest. This is um, actually considered the BioBidet Slim Edge. And this one doesn't require any electricity whatsoever. All you have to do is hook this up to your toilet and this just simply goes underneath your existing toilet seat. It's got a little valve right here that you just simply choose whether you want it to wash you in the back or in the front. It's got these retractable little jets right here. The only downside to this one, I mean, it's, it's incredibly inexpensive. It's about $35 and I'll put a link in the video description. If you're in a warm climate where your cold water is not too cold, here in New Jersey, it'd be kind of really cold. Uh, it would certainly wake you up in the morning if you, uh, if you use this on a cold day. So that's one of the downsides of an inexpensive bidet like this, is there's, no, there's nothing to heat the water. In order to heat the water, you need to plug it in. And that's where the higher end BioBidet Discovery DLS comes into play. This one replaces your entire toilet seat. And of course, it has a plug. And the plug is needed because it has an automatically opening, closing seat on it. It also has a retractable arm with multiple jets. Uh, it's got a night light, it's got a heated seat, and it also heats the water, which is kind of important where I live. So there's just a lot of features on this one, and I will talk about it after I get it installed. But now we can go in and uh, actually take it and get it installed. And although the cord comes out on the right side of the bidet, that's okay. It's plenty of cord here for me to go underneath the toilet and I can coil it up under the toilet and it'll go into the wall on the side. Compared to the outlet, installing the bidet was trivial. I just had to remove the old toilet seat, install the bracket using this guide, very simple to do, and then just snap it into place. The water line connects to the bottom of the toilet and it just gets plugged in. And that's it. And once the bidet is installed, you could just walk up to it and it automatically opens. It's got some kind of a sensor. And it also has a nightlight in there. Hopefully you can see that. It's really pretty, pretty cool. You can see that at night. So you could find it in the dark. And the remote control is installed over here. And it has a uh, open and close on the lid and open and close on the seat. So if I just click that button, it picks up the seat. I don't even have to touch it. And then when I'm done, I could just click close the lid or you just walk away and it closes on its own after a while. Now the seat itself has a sensor so that the, the functions won't go on unless somebody's actually sitting here. And that's a good thing. So your kids don't play with the buttons and get the room all wet. So if you push on this, it'll simulate there. And what it's doing now is it's going through this pre-clean on the wand, and it's also heating the water for you ahead of time. It assumes if you're sitting down on the toilet, you're gonna wanna use the bidet. Now the back of the remote has a whole bunch of functions here. You can change the water temperature, the sea temperature, and the air temperature, which is the blower. So. Under here is the wand, and under here is the blower. So that opens up when the blower is actually on. And uh, I can't simulate that without sitting on the toilet. So uh, you're just going to have to trust me on that. You can turn the nightlight on and off. And you can adjust the water pressure, and you can adjust the nozzle distance so it comes out, the arm comes out a little bit further so you can get it dialed in exactly where you want it. I can actually push this button here for nozzle clean and you'll be able to see that's what the nozzle looks like. It is a stainless steel nozzle, it's, um, or I should say it's a stainless steel wand and it's got a couple of nozzles in it. 
transfer, I guess, different from the front versus the back. And um, it also does a self-clean in there. It has uh, ultraviolet lights in there too. So, you know, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> that's why I said this is a high-end bidet and that's why it requires the electricity. You can find links to both of these bidets in the video description below. And uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Welcome home. Be sure to subscribe and watch our new series, The Living Flip. Ooh. Look. That has inch and a quarter. It's the little one. That's the